hi again so if you've seen yesterday's video you'll have seen that i was talking about my journey into the world of frugal living how the benefits affected me in my life and uh, i'm still sat at the marina same as i was yesterday and today i'm going to be uh sharing the answers to questions that i got asked when i gave the speech with Ryan Hogan's men's community. Ryan Hogan has his own YouTube channel. I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, these are questions that I got asked when I gave a speech on his men's community. So I'm going to answer them in this video too, so that anybody that didn't get to um, see or hear my speech on there will maybe get some benefit or inspiration from it. So let's begin. All right, so the first question was from Andreas. He asked, so what do you do with the money if you have it and still live frugally? This is a great question, actually. Like, I have way more money than I need to live the lifestyle that I have, and yet I still choose to live well below my means. Why do I do this? Well, partly because I enjoy it. I just enjoy living frugally. And uh, also, obviously, all of the extra money that gets generated goes into the retirement pot. Like, I don't want to have to think too much about my how much money I've got in the future i want i want to feel comfortable knowing that 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 is taken care of but i also don't want to be one of those people that dies with millions in the bank because you can't take any of it with you so no doubt i will be distributing that wealth amongst other people and uh you know making sure that they have a good time with that money i want to, i want to be alive and see them enjoying the fruits of my labor so that's uh that's what happens with the money that i earn now all right, then Ryan asked, do you ever get a strong urge to splurge on anything? So it's very, very rare that I actually splurge on anything. But there is one thing that I happily spend money on, and that is travel. Uh, right now, as you can see behind me, I'm in uh, Croatia and I really enjoy traveling. I think it's one of the only things that you can spend money on that is genuinely worth the money especially if you do it frugally <laughs> uh, i choose to travel to destinations that don't cost a lot like croatia uh, poland's another great place to travel to that is very cost effective but uh even when i'm away i i, I am still frugal when i'm away but if I take a flight to the other side of the world, like to Thailand or something, that's, you know, you're talking about a thousand dollar flight there, but I will, I will happily splurge that like not too often, like, but every year or two I'll splurge on a long haul flight like that to the other side of the world. I mean, you make a lot of that money back anyway, because it's cheaper living over there and, and it doesn't cost as much for the accommodation. But that is one thing that I definitely don't mind spending money on. Uh, the benefits of travel far outweigh the cost, uh, the experiences you have and, and being able to look back on those experiences for the rest of your life and smile is definitely worth it. It's not like when you buy something and you get bored of it within a few months. Uh, traveling has the, the perk of making amazing memories that will always make you smile for the rest of your life. Ryan then asked, do you spend a lot on vacation or you stay frugal out there? So here's the thing. When I am on holiday, I uh, I still don't eat out. I'm still very frugal. <laughs> I probably eat out about once every three or four days. And it's usually Italian food because it's better value. Uh, I, I mean, I'll, I'll have like the odd ice cream as well. So I do spend a little bit more, but hardly anything. Uh, what I do do as well with the accommodation is I'll, I'll usually find a cheap accommodation for the first few nights. And then as the holiday progresses, I'll, I'll move to gradually more expensive apartments and then spend the last couple of nights in what you would maybe class as higher end. It still wouldn't be a luxury apartment or, or whatever, or hotel, but it would be, you know, something that's beyond what I would normally spend, but it would only be for the last couple of nights. All right, Patrick asked, have you still had lifestyle inflation, but on a more conscious level since the income has increased for you, but you still love the frugal lifestyle? So other than traveling, um, I still continue to live very frugally. I drive a $300 car. I shop at charity shops. And uh, yeah, I still live very, very well below my means. And uh, on a conscious level, I would say that frugal living brings uh, a, an amazing psychological 
effect to your life because it brings you peace of mind knowing that you can survive with very little and obviously the more you save and invest also gives you that um, kind of security blanket knowing that if you were to liquidate your assets you would have enough to get you through any hard times if there was like a financial crisis all right for Shahahin, not sure if i pronounced that right how you found other people just as frugal as you so i think i am probably the most frugal person that i know uh, i can't think of anyone else as frugal as me i do have a friend called ba uh he lives in australia we meet up sometimes and we've had travel adventures together he's pretty frugal as well and yeah i find it really uh, refreshing to meet someone like ba because he's not quite on my level he'll spend a bit more than me but he understands it he gets it i don't have to try and explain to him why i'm being so careful about what i spend my money on so that's uh that's that's nice to know people like that are out there and that i've met some of those people andreas also asked do you invest in higher quality food all right so long time viewers of this channel will know that i'm a big supporter of brian johnson uh, he's all about longevity and I pretty much copy his diet, although I don't copy the blueprint diet completely. You can see more about that in this video if you want to check it out. But as you'll see in that video, I don't buy organic. That's one thing that I am considering. Uh, I do eat very healthy, just like Brian, but I do buy normal supermarket brands. I'm a little bit apprehensive about buying organic because I feel like you never really know whether it truly is organic, even if it's supposed to be certified. You don't know what they've had in the soil, even if they haven't added anything to the uh, fruit fruit or veg itself. So that's something that I need to consider more, actually. He made a great point, Andreas, there. So I may start to spend a bit more on food because it's true. What we put in our bodies, you know, that's that's very important. It's It, it turns into us. So... Uh, I may very well start eating organic in the future. Ryan again, how have you found women's responses to the lifestyle? <laughs> so frugal living uh, in women's eyes, most most women, when they see a guy being frugal, obviously it's a little bit off-putting for them because they deep down they want to know that the guy is a, a good provider. But uh, I don't really think it makes much of a difference. Like, I've made a couple of videos about this recently, actually. Here's the thumbnails for them. But to be honest, most girls, like, if they like you, then it doesn't really matter. There is some girls that like to be taken out to fancy dinners and they'll be quite insistent about it. But whenever I would have dated those girls, um, I would have realized very fast and, and known that we don't share the same values. So I don't want to date a girl like that. Why would I want to date somebody that doesn't have the same values as me? That's really important. Um, so when you have good chemistry with a girl, she, she won't care so much about you living frugally, especially if she's planning a future together with you, because she'll be thinking, well, good. He's, he's thinking about our future and he's, he's investing that money that he's saving wisely. So if anything, she'll be pleased about it. So I never really come across any noticeable effects from, uh, from being frugal in the eyes of women. Last question. Ren asks, what do you invest in besides real estate? All right, that's a great question to finish on. So I have six properties and I don't want any more properties because managing them and maintaining them would be too detrimental to my peace of mind because I manage them myself. And you might think, why don't you get a management company to do it for you? But, but they take a big chunk of the money and they don't usually do a very good job. So I probably won't Never say never, but I probably won't get any more properties. Now I just invest in the S&P 500 and bonds. Uh, but overall, the best thing to invest in is yourself. So reading good books. Uh, I mean, think about it. You are your greatest asset and you want yourself to grow and improve over time, just like your assets do. So number one on the list is you and me <laughs> that's what i invest in the most i i always strive to improve and become a better person than i was and i would recommend that to anybody else that's watching this so hope you hope you got something from this if you did you can hit that like button if you want to
and uh, I will see you in next weekend's video where I'll do a day in the life while I'm here in Croatia. <laughs> so if you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, do that and I'll see you then. Ciao.